Welcome to week 12 of the Tonto's Demise podcast. I'm Detonators, uh, Tonto Bowl 6 champ with... Uh, Matt Dettling, Tonto Bowl 1 and 3 champion. And uh, any idea why we played that song, Dettling? Because it's not because of how much you love Weezer. <laughs> oh, yeah, Weezer's the greatest band ever in the world. They're really talented. Oh, you do like the Blue Album. The Blue Album, yes. Pinkerton? Pinkerton, yes. Okay. I went, it's the green album that you start losing me. And then every album after that gets progressively worse and more crappy. That's true. To the point where I think it's like five-year-olds playing in a garage. Yep. And now they're on to the album with the title track, Back in the Shack, which is awful. I highly recommend that no one listens to that song. It's really, really bad. You actually listened to it? I did. Because I, I, I still hold out like an ounce of hope every time they put something out that maybe this is the one where they're going to actually get back to where they started and it's funny because back back in the shack is talking about like getting back to where they were in like 1994 but it clearly isn't when it, whenever you actually listen to the song so it's just more disappointment i actually knew that that song was going to suck before the pick hit the guitar string <laughs> the only thing i'm ever hoping for is a rivers runs through us reunion tour where they actually play the crappy weezer music because that would be one of the most entertaining things to me to ever see you guys struggle because i know you guys wouldn't like the music but you, and have, have jay oh, be, be so exuberant and like trying to trying to be happy about singing this music i feel like he would be singing with tears and i'd know they weren't tears of joy yeah he'd be singing beverly hills uh, and just like forcing it out it'd be, hash it'd be sad or hash pipe yeah that's, that's all right that's, a, that's a, whatever we, we agree to disagree. I mean, it's not great. It's okay. So, I mean, I mean when you got to cover up that you suck by putting, uh, what's his name from Lost on as the cover? The fat guy? I don't know. Justin knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So does Craig. I can't remember his name. It's really pissing me off. I, I think it's interesting that you said that you could have predicted that song was going to suck before the pick hit the guitar strings, but you couldn't predict which running back, which defense, which quarterback to put in this past week. <laughs> what are you talking about? Talking about how y your team fell to the uh, New Gods Mad Titans pretty pretty handily, but... Well, it was not handily at all. You didn't even have a chance on Monday night. Still, it was only by, like, I think 23 points. When that game started, did you think you had a chance to win? I always knew you had a chance. <laughs> if he was in the flex, you would have had a, a hope and a prayer. He might have another 100 yards, another three touchdowns. I mean, if it can happen to the other guy on the bench, why can't it happen to mine? Sorry, guy. I know. You never give up on your own team. I, I agree. But I, I'll admit, I sent my congratulations to Jimmy before that game started. <laughs> before the game started? Uh, Absolutely. The whole league started and fired off the fireworks and had the picnic without inviting me. And everybody cheered. We'll talk about that and unfinished business. It was a great picnic, too. It was a great picnic? What would you have? Um, we had um, a lot of burnt toast. Oh, or <laughs> shit. You didn't have anything. Don't tell. It was not a picnic. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll get into more of your matchup later. I'm just glad it's over so we can finally move on with the rest of our lives. Unfinished business. Let's see what's in the uh, paper today, Brian. Food and entertainment? No. Yeah. Shop Dubois? No. <laughs> Let's see here. What do we do with a Dubois? You can't yeah, knock the Dubois Boy Mall. Pittsburgh. I don't know, but the Dubois Mall, there's nothing better than that. Really? There's always something happening. There's really? always, that's the tagline. There's always something happening. And Jay will back me up, but there is an awesome belt buckle lady who has a booth there every Christmas. She has collector's belt buckles that you would never believe. And she's one of the scariest women you'll ever meet, too. Uh, not, not you know, working with a full set of cards upstairs, not working with a full set of chiclets in her mouth. And uh, she will try to sell you any belt buckle that she's got, even if you have no interest. And then she'll try and tease you with her collector Coke machine that she's like, oh, yeah, I can't sell you that. No, 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 I'm sitting on that. I'm going to wait until that goes... <laughs> The market is just right for that Coke machine. Then I'm going to sell it. And that's where I'm going to make my money. So, uh, anyways, long tangent to say that Dubois Mall rocks. I was just about to say, and you were just saying about how our podcasts are too long. You just gave a minute to two minute speech about the the belt lady from Dubois Mall and her collector's Coke machine. All all I can say about that is that's called a, a pulling a Detling. That's what oh, Detling does. Oh, that's a Detling, is it? <laughs> 
Well, speaking of Deadlings, in the Dubois uh, final Connor concert, there's these two little hot girls, Megan and Sarah Lip Liptick? Liptack? I, I mean, I can't describe it. Probably like 12. Nah, I'm going to go with 16. Uh, they look pretty. There's a picture in the Dubois paper dated uh, September 12th, 2013. Uh, why are we reading the paper from September? That's a good question. Well, <laughs> hypothetically, this paper has just changed to <laughs> November 20th, 2014. All right, on to, the, All right, on to the, the rest of the obituaries. Let's see. No one there's no obituaries. <laughs> it's yours in this paper from 2013. But there isn't any from 2014 either, Brian. No obituaries. Uh, no, no, not at all. What's the deal? Oh, well, well, hold on a second. Here's a really interesting article here. It says, Springfield Isotopes, nowhere to be found. Well, that sounds interesting. Let's see what it says. It says, on Monday, the Springfield Isotopes inexplicably left the fantasy field of play with just two minutes left on the clock and rushed to the locker room. Now, I have no idea why he went to the locker room, but I can only say one thing. Like, maybe he has no respect for his team, you know? He jumped ship. He bailed on him. <laughs> Any thoughts? Oh, I definitely agree with you. I mean, obviously, he just can't, can't take that his team would not perform anymore. You want to give him a chance. Uh, he won. I mean, he traded for his best player. He traded for uh, Golden Tate, and that didn't help him at all. So, and and he was hoping for one thing on Monday night, and that was for uh, one of his favorite players of all time to uh, get him a couple points. But uh, that didn't happen at all. So Craig was mad. He just left. He's like, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, and he rushed off. And I think he it says here. Oh, he wanted to to roll with Blunt. Oh, that makes sense. That uh, makes sense. And he's found on the Steelers uh, team bus with LeGarrette Blunt shirtless. Very weird. Very weird. <laughs> very strange. But um, I guess, you know, desperate times, desperate measures. You know, he first, you know, was a negative influence on your boy Le'Veon Bell. Right, yeah. And I mean, then, get rid of that guy. Get rid of that. And now he's finally, you know, gotten taken Craig to the dark side and... He'll probably I mean, end up in New England with uh, Lee Garrett Blunt. Probably. I mean, I guess if they were on the bus shirtless together, maybe uh, maybe Blunt was stressed out and he needed a release. <laughs> and Craig was that release? Uh, if Craig wasn't, uh, the Steelers were. Well, I, that's, that's a very interesting article from the Dubois newspaper. Did not expect it to be that compelling. <laughs> So I guess uh, that means Kabisic is still alive, still afloat. The Springfield Isotopes will fight again. Uh, yeah, they will. Apparently, uh, everybody that's still uh, before, besides Jay and the Rook are still alive and kicking. Amazing, but it's true. Yeah, and maybe they'll make it to the end of the season, you know, fighting for that last spot. And they're going to have to wrestle it away from you, I take it. I, I hope not. I mean, I hope, I mean, the way Craig said it, it's possible that a 6-7 and seven team could make the playoffs. Uh, it was doubtful, but at the way it's going, it might be true. And I'm sure Craig already knows this, but for everybody else listening at home, the perfect scenario for him would be for everyone to lose this week, including you, and then the final match of the week would pretty much seal sixth place. Uh, everybody knows, including Craig. Craig, I actually saw him last night, and he one of the things that he said was, he hopes to God that that is what happens. Like He, just, he says even if, even if he loses... And I and I somehow it works that the last se last game of the season I need to beat him. He said that would make up for everything if he beats me. So even if he doesn't make the playoffs and I lose and don't make the playoffs, I feel like so he's got like he's, he's like one hand up out of the grave and he wants to drag me down like from hell with you know what I mean. You ever yeah. see his videos, and movies? He wants to pull me down with him, and that that'll save it for him. That's saving his season. So if you see Craig Bissick mumbling to himself as he walks up and down Graham Avenue in Wimber, holding wearing a rosary. And wearing a red photon helmet. <laughs> a red photon helmet and holding a rosary. <laughs> you'll know exactly what he's doing. So he's just really holding out hope. Yeah, and if you do see him, I'll give you $10 to climb over the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> so those prayers don't get answered. That's right. Delling's putting a hit out on Kabisic. <laughs> Over fantasy football. A really expensive hit, $10. <laughs> All right, Deadling, um, anything else on, for the unfinished business besides the uh, paper? 
Of course there is, Brian. You know me. I've always got unfinished business. Uh, this unfinished business uh, happens to coincide with my uh, my unfortunate loss to Jimmy uh, last week. Now, now I know everybody loves to see me lose, and and I'm the villain in the league. We Whatever do. we do. Whatever. Yeah, but I mean. I, thought, I started thinking of it on the way over here. I said, okay, well, if there's a villain, then there must be a good guy in the league. And I tried to start thinking. And I was like, well, Craig definitely is not. Nope. Bean isn't. Uh, Justin Mohorik is not either. He's uh, close. No, nah, well, he's still. No, hold on. He's not. Uh, you're not a good guy no. either. Um, Tree Size might be like the lovable loser guy. But he's not like the mm, he's still whiny, like a, whiny. yeah he's a whiny good guy if he is I mean he's like he's like that superhero that doesn't want to save you but he will just because he knows he has to like, I don't want to jump off that building but I will and I should get all the credit like I wanted to but I th- and maybe the closest thing to a good guy in our league is Jay Huber yeah and maybe Jimmy but Jimmy I think could be a little bit of a villain if he if he learned how to trash talk correctly but uh, yes and Jeff Jeff's like the unknown invisible man. And the Rook. Uh, Josh. Josh. Josh is a villain. Josh likes to kill everybody. Look at look at the haikus that Josh makes. Uh, we, should, we should read some of those and let the league know how much of a, a douchey villain Josh is. We'll get into that. We'll get into that? Okay, all right. But no, no, here's the thing. I know everyone wants me to lose, but I mean, afterwards, I mean, you guys, you guys are just darn right mean. I got so many texts from people about making fun of me because I didn't put in the right people or something. And... It's just, I mean, it's not my fault. Does anybody in the league knew that, knew that Jonas Gray was going to go off for 200 yards or four touchdowns? Kevin Bean probably did. Kevin Bean did not know. I defy you to, to prove that. Prove it. Somebody prove it. Did, did anybody, I mean, anybody would put Mark Sanchez over Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger. You're lying. You're straight lying. I don't know if I would have played Matthews. I was hopeful. Yeah. Matthews I, over Jonas Gray. I see. I Jonas see Gray has had like. He had 86 yards, and if he's going against the Colts, I think it's going to be a pass fest. You're Ryan right. Matthews going against the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. And to be fair, he got 70 yards on 12 to 14 carries or something like that. It was his first time back. But really, LaFell. What about LaFell? You had him in your flex, right? Well, I have four good receivers. I got Vincent Jackson, too. Hey, oh, oh I see why you want to bring this up. <laughs> you want to bring this up because of Mike Evans. <laughs> it's always about you, Brian. Uh, no, it's not. Sure, no. sure. <laughs> Mike Evans all of a sudden becomes like the best rookie in the world, and McCown goes, holy crap. Vince Jackson's like 6'5", so is Mike Evans. I don't get it. Throw it to Mike Evans. Okay, you got the young blood in town, man. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you brought him up there. He's an awesome receiver. Uh, of course he is. Of course he is. I, that's why I really, really was hoping for Vincent Jackson to go to the Eagles in the trade deadline, but it did not happen. I was so pissed. I don't, know, I don't know why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would keep him and not try to get a draft pick when he's not going to return. Good point. It's so dumb. Yeah, you're two and whatever. Yeah. I think you're one and whatever. I can't even remember. I have two now. Two? Okay, well, still. That's beside the point. I got off my story because you just you redirected me off. Sorry about that. Yeah, but anyway, so I got these texts. Examples are uh, from lovely Kevin Bean. Don't think he's like a nice guy because his text goes, Hey, what a week. Jonas Gray and the Green Bay D were killer pickups for you. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Really, uh, really needed to see that. And then he goes, Also... When they serve me my Dolce Spud, I would like them to sing congratulations to you to the tune of a happy birthday. Yes, ouch. It, yeah, ouch. It does look like you'll get your uh, Dolce Spud at the moment unless we go for a bet of double or nothing, but uh, which might occur. But here, so you uh, had the pleasure of trying to insult me and make fun of me. Well, hey, okay, yeah, great. I, I guess uh, Jonas Gray and Green Bay D were great pickups. You know why? Because I'll still have them. Hey, great pickup with uh, great drafts with uh, Brandon Cooks. Have fun with him when you're bench for two to six weeks with a broken finger. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, when he got knocked out, I laughed. Yeah. I laughed because I knew Kevin Bean was like, son of a bitch. Are you serious? Two of my starting three receivers out on the same week. All those algorithms I used, I got from that guy. And now I might be starting freaking Justin Hunter and Kendall Wright. Well, sir, Kevin Bean, you might make the playoffs, but you're not going anywhere, buddy. You have to pray that Sanders comes back. And even then, I'm highly doubtful because without Brandon Cooks, you got squat, man. What, are you going to put Kendall Wright in there? Sure, I'll get three, four passes. Are you going to put Justin Hunter and pray that Zach Mettenberger can throw the ball? This guy's too busy trying to be a 1970s quarterback taking selfies before the football game. Anyways, besides the point, Kevin, you're, you're out of luck, buddy. I mean, you're, 
You put your foot in your mouth. I hope you, I hope you freaking choke. You got a lot of anger going on there, don't you? I do. I do. Now, uh, there's a couple others. Justable Hork. He, uh, yeah, he could be, he could definitely be one of the nice guys, nicest guys in our league. Could be. Could be. Uh, he always, <laughs> so he made a trade with me and, um, he said, uh, he said text going, Jared cooked it better than Jordan Reed. Thanks. Didn't need to know that one. And then also, uh, let's see here. Scott, he's, hey, hey, at least Josh Gordon gets reinstated today. Like, he's trying to be, like, the bad cop, good cop. And then um, the worst one was, he goes, Charles Manson is also getting more action than you. Man, that's a low blow. Ch- why do you got to pick on my <laughs> my dating life like that? I mean, that's so terrible. That's to, below to, the belt. That is really below the belt. I mean... Obviously, the guy's 80 years old. He's in prison. The girl, the 26-year-old bimbo, has a, a fixation on the guy. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to go to the uh, lengths to get laid like Charles Manson did, apparently. You're not going to murder people just to... I'm not going to have people convince them to murder these people yes. and then sit in yes. jail and rot with a Nazi sign on my head, forehead. I'm and glad you're not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not that bad of a person just to get some action, sir. So, um, yeah, thanks, Justin. Really appreciate it. Uh... I hope that uh, your whole team dies in a fiery plane crash. Anything else you want to tell us about? Uh, let's get up to Let's talk about your matchup just a little bit. I mean, I hear a lot of anger, a lot of angst, but I didn't hear any props going out to Jimmy, who actually did get the victory this week and holding on to that top spot. Anything wow. you want to say to Jimmy? I mean, Jimmy wasn't even in, in part. Of, Jimmy didn't text me or anything like that, so I, the anger was towards those people. As far as my matchup... Uh, I don't have a computer screen, so I can't read everything. Uh, I do give props to Jimmy. Jimmy, you won. You squashed me. Finally. Finally, one of the Huber brothers squashed me. Uh, I tip my hat to you. You're, you're in first place. Apparently, everything's going right in your life. You, you moved to Jersey. You got a beautiful girlfriend. A hot tub. A hot tub? Which I didn't even know about until last week. Oh, okay. A hot tub. And uh, your team's in first place. Everything's bouncing in the right direction. It's like... When you make championship seasons, uh, a lot of things got to fall into place. Uh, injuries, uh, people just people's teams performing the worst the whole year against you. Um, Jeremy Hill going against New Orleans and getting 152 yards. Ridiculous, but it happened. Uh, I, I don't know the rest of his team. Demarius Thomas got 17 points quietly. Uh, who else plays for his team? Andrew Luck. And well, yeah, Andrew Luck. Well, still got about fifty. Yeah, still. When you, even when you lose, you get fifty. Arizona D shuts down the Detroit offense like nothing happened. Like I mean, six points. Wow. But uh, I mean, and uh, you know, Tom Tom Brady is the third worst uh, quarterback on my roster. Mark Sanchez is the best. Um, let's see here. Jonas Gray goes off for one hundred nine. I think there was a stack correction, so I think it was two hundred yards wow. and four touchdowns. Uh, that was, that was lovely to watch. I'm sure Jimmy, uh, takes, is, uh, very happy that knowing that when I was watching, I was like just tearing my, if I had hair, I'd be tearing my hair out going another touchdown. Sure. Why don't you go over six touchdowns? Make it easier on me. Um, like Craig said, a waste of a great performance from Le'Veon Bell. Um, but I, I, I was, I actually was excited to watch that. Uh, let's see here. Vincent Jackson. Jackass. Yeah, you got to drop him, man. Yeah, I might. I really might, actually. Jordan Reed? What? I mean, that could be... Oh, my God. You're, you're trying to go for the Cleveland Browns pin on that one, huh? <laughs> never, never. I could go to Craig now. Could go to Craig now, yes. I, oh, in what world does Brandon McManus, the Denver kicker, get one point? I mean, seriously. St. Louis destroys... They don't even try field goals. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, okay. So, all right, my team really shit the bed. But looking at Jimmy's team, Jimmy's team didn't do that much better. So it was a very hyped matchup, and I, I have to apologize to the whole league because I feel that both of us disappointed the league. Good. We should have been like a 200-point extravaganza. Hopefully I get to meet him in the playoffs, and uh, we can settle this like men. And uh, But, yeah, I give my props to Jimmy. You got me. I'm going to be Huber squashed. I'm going to play your brother this week. I hope I squash him back. So then I'll just be the Huber Squasher instead of the Huber uh, Squasher. You, I, was say, I was wondering if you're changing your team name. We'll see after this week. Okay. All right, next on our show, we got a new thing we called a, it's called a Team Tweets. Team Tweets! 
Team Tweet! This is where uh, we get uh, players' reactions to uh, events that have happened within the league, uh, NFL and fantasy-related. And uh, we have a, we have about three or four of them we'd like to... We, I mean, there's a ton of three or four that we especially want to let you guys listen to. Uh, the first one is uh, from uh, Jordan Reed, tweeted to Robert Griffin. And this is what it says. Hey, Robert. Throw the damn ball to me. Stop checking down the Roy Hallou Jr. 10 to 15 times a game. When you're losing and you can't throw the ball long, go across the middle to Jordan Reed. I am ranked one of the best, I'm supposed to be one of the best tight ends. I can't be the best tight end when I'm only getting targeted twice a game and you see that I'm catching both balls. That's my tweet. Stop being a jackass. Trying to run around like you think you're in Baylor still. This is the NFL. And stop making commercials with your mom about Campbell's soup and her being a sergeant in the army. Focus on football. Throw to your stupid tight end, damn it. Wait a second. That's a tweet? That was a tweet. That was. That's like, usually it's 158 characters. That was a really long ass tweet. It was, it was multiple. But I, I mean, I, I was trying to bring out his uh, anger. I could feel it through the uh, tweet, the Twitter machine. Uh, the next one we have here is from uh, Ben Tate to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, it goes a little something like this. Hi, Cleveland. This is Ben Tate. Um, you guys just released me, and, and now I'm on the Minnesota Vikings, so I still have a job. Eat it, suckers. I didn't want to play for your crummy city anyway. Your mistake by the lake. It smells. All your dirty hipsters walking around. Your cheap pizza. Your shitty casino. Cleveland, uh, LeBron can have you. I don't want you. You're not part of my family. Go Minnesota. All right. The next tweet looks like it's from LeGarrette Blunt to the Pittsburgh Steelers. It says here, yeah, I got high with I got high with Bell right before the plane. Yeah, that was my idea. Yeah, I'm a bad influence. You know who I'm going to hang out with next? Snoop Dogg. Me and Snoop Dogg. We're going to send out Instagram videos about Todd Haley until we can't even see straight, if you know what I'm saying. Snoop, he should be the offensive coordinator for the Steelers, not you. You know, you're over there busy writing napkin messages to fans saying Kansas City sucks. Well, you know what? You suck. Uh, this next one is from uh, Des Bryant to Craig Kabisic. This is, and it goes a little something like this. You dumb son of a bitch. You traded me for golden frickin' Tate for one game. I have supported you for three years. I have made your team almost legendary in the hate hatred field. Now, uh, and then you're going to go and give golden Tate a shot? Man, I just signed for with Rockefeller Nation, a rock whatever the hell Jay-Z's is, uh, and... You you quit on me. You quit on me, Craig. Just like the Cowboys not offering me a long-term deal. And then my, my owner, who I thought had my back, quits on me too? There's no way. Well, I'll show you. I'm going to lead Josh to the playoffs. We're taking whatever twerking bull haircut FC Hayward, Des Bryant's D-Bombers. Uh, we're taking them to the promised land. And as for you, Craig, nigga, please. There's a special someone out there who's going to really appreciate this next segment. Um, we didn't have enough time last week, and we uh, didn't want him to uh, his efforts to go unnoticed. So right now we're going to give you Poetry Corner by the Twerkin' Bull Cuts. This one goes out to the new gods, Mad Titans. No one is afraid. You are not really a wolf. Stop the pretending. This one goes out to FC Bahoric. Didn't know football when you came into the league. But look at you now. Ba -da -ba -ba. This one goes out to I'm a bitch. You certainly are. Bench your running backs, pussy. You'll still lose with them. This one goes to the Rook, the league whipping boy. 
Not sure how you won this league. Make better trades, dude. Yeah. Give it a bop, bop, boop, bop. All right, let's check out uh, the oyster, the, uh, the oyster bar. <laughs> the oyster bar? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man, he's drinking again. <laughs> let's check the answering machine. Oh, the answering machine. Oh, not the oyster bar. Okay, I'll check the answering machine. Hello, this is Carol and David Chip. Please leave a message after the beep. If this is my mother, I cannot do another thing. Hello, I'm not your servant. I cannot feed your cat, take in the mail, empty the litter box, and whatever else it is you keep calling about. Anyways, please leave a message after the beep. Uh... What a relief. The universe is yet in balance again. I, uh, I, I just, uh, I'm still, I'm still reeling from, from the battle. Um, a bit weary. And, uh, but, but there's no time to, there's no time to rest. I must get on to the next one, um, against the panda bear, um, number two. Uh, and, uh, I, I wanted to congratulate that. Um, it has been talked up for a long, 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 long time, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I was scared as hell for a little while there, um, but in the end, uh, you know, the yin and the yang uh, balanced out, and uh, and I can only hope for uh, the second Huber to uh, to make it two, day, two weeks in a row, so uh, anyway, congratulations, Ted, uh, it was a good battle, um, we'll look forward to either the playoffs or next year. Uh, so we can talk it up yet again, and uh, and yeah, good luck to everybody this week. We have uh, two two hard weeks ahead of us before the playoffs. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, the league has been awesome so far this year. Um, that not uh, great podcast, Craig. Um, your wrap ups are awesome. Um, you guys, I can't I can't appreciate it enough uh, for making this league so good. So. Uh, Hopefully, I can I can continue to be your commission for next year, unless you guys all uh, veto me out um, for some reason. But uh, other than that, yeah, on to this week. Thanks, guys. Jimmy, what were you thinking, man? It was a, kind of a good message, but it was too mushy. Like, that was your opportunity to lay into Detling. Seriously, go watch a couple of those Instagram videos from Snoop Dogg. It'll give you a couple pointers on how to talk smack on your opponent. And I know you're a good guy deep down, but, man, you really could have let Detling have it. And you didn't. So maybe it makes you a bigger uh, manager than Detling, but um, I would have taken him down, taken him out below the knees. That's just me. Wow. Taking me out down below the knees? Yeah. Jesus, I mean, I don't know what to say that. I'm a little worried. Why do I do a podcast with you every week? If I know if I turn my back for a second, it whip me in the back with a cane. Uh, you know, you know, Jimmy uh, didn't want to rip me too bad because he wants to wait to the playoffs. Oh, okay, that's when, true. When we play, because I mean, after I beat Bohork in the third slot, because I'll be sixth, uh, the first person I'm going to play, I believe, is Jimmy, because or, or I believe you, because if it's you versus Bean, I feel that you're going to beat Bean because two of his receivers suck and they're on the... Uh, on the IR, so to speak, yeah. of his team. And he has Kendall Hunter and Kendall Wright, or True. Justin Hunter or whatever. So um, I know right now he's chomping at the bit for that Dolce Spud. He's probably thinking about it for like four weeks until I see him again. And he's thinking about the money that he just won for uh, best, you know, knockout pool. Oh. oh, yeah, let me tell you that. Oh, here comes a tangent. I can just feel it. <laughs> I wonder if he uh, told his wife, because his first wife, uh, I believe when he won the league way back in the day, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite things that Bean ever said to me is, Hey, Detling. Well, first of all, he's complaining because he didn't get his money like within two or three days, and or, or two or three weeks as well. <laughs> but uh, he's like, Detling. Um, so yeah, can I get that money? Uh, yeah. So I told my wife that I was supposed to only win a hundred. That the prize money was a hundred bucks, but it's actually two hundred. So I get to keep that other hundred for myself. I also told her that I only bought him for twenty. So because I didn't want her to to get pissed because you know she runs our budget with an iron fist. And I just thought I saw that I cracked me up, cracked me up just because Bean was hiding money from his wife already. Fantasy money. <laughs> Fantasy money. So 
Uh, I wonder if he's told his wife that he's only getting thirty dollars from the knockout poll this week, so he can use <laughs> use this thirty dollars for fun. Uh, who knows what he'll do? Maybe he'll buy like a special guitar string or or, or pick from whatever one of the bands that he likes so much. But no, I, uh, yeah, uh, great game, Jimmy. Hope to see you in the playoffs and uh, go. Uh, what's my team's name? <laughs> Huber squashed. Go Huber squashed. This week's matchups. All right, first matchup we have is the Detonators versus the Rook. Uh, this is a chance for uh, Brian to put another stake in uh, the Rook's heart. Yep, yeah, baby. And um, I'm sure he's saying, hey, thanks, Rook. Uh, I'm going to use Eddie Lacy that you traded me to crush your skull. I would be. I am. Uh, <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. And uh, he's uh, probably saying to the whole league, hey, thanks for uh, not trying to trade me for Vereen. Uh, I'm looking over the lineups here. Uh, just disappeared, came back. All right, there we go. Um, I actually think it's going to be tight. I feel that uh, the Rook is going to upset him. Wow. Throw him down a 6-6 six and six world. Wishful thinking. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a whole mess. But uh, Beckham Jr. versus Dallas. Edelman versus Detroit. Bolden versus Washington. Some highly uh, pass-happy games coming here. Trent Richardson versus Jax. No and Maude Bradshaw to uh, get in his way. Who cares about the guy that they signed from the practice squad? I don't. Um, Johnson versus Cincinnati. Then you got uh, St. Louis D versus San Diego. Of course, that is uh, counterproductive since he has Phillip Rivers of the QB. Uh, we've got Drew Brees versus Baltimore. And surely the Mike Evans show has got to stop sometime. Um, and Brian is just praying that Isaiah Crowell gets more time than Terrence West. Going with uh, the Rook. Very compelling argument for going with the Rook, especially that part of this quarterback going against the defense. He really sold it there. Well, hey, when Mark, Mark Sanchez got 46 against uh, the Green Bay Packers, it's Green Bay got 50. That's a good point. Yeah, and, and you, you could have played both of them, and you I, didn't. And I would have destroyed Jimmy, but I didn't. But what, I didn't. What a coulda, shoulda. Anyways, on to this first matchup. Um, I just have to take a quick moment, uh, a deadling moment again, to uh, talk a little bit about why my team is not only going to win this week, but do fairly well in the playoffs. I'm going to take one step short of dominating in the playoffs. Dominating? I'm feeling really, really good about the team right now. Drew Brees is underperforming to this point, still getting me 50 points a week. So he's a bound to turn it on. Um, although Brandon Cook's going out doesn't help. So I, I will say that doesn't help my odds. Um, Mike Evans, he's turned into the stud that I had hoped that he would turn into when I drafted him 10th overall. T.Y. Hilton had a quiet week, but he's still going to be lights out this, this postseason run. Cecil Shorts, got to love that Robinson went down. He's now their actual number one. He's going to get a lot of garbage time. Eddie Lacy. Finally stepping into that role that he was supposed to in the beginning of the year. and But if he hadn't, I wouldn't have him on my team right now. Crowell was, couldn't close the door fast enough on Ben Tate. He's like, finally, this slow as molasses, like, punk is off of our team. And I can take the spotlight. Yeah, I fumbled the ball now and again, but I'm going to take it over. Terrence West can watch me from the sidelines. The black unicorn, he's going to be there. Shane Vereen, every once in a while. And uh, Shane, I'm sorry, uh, Shane Graham, he's going to get you some, he's going to get me decent points, consistent points. And Dallas D or the San Diego D is going to give me 20 to 30 points. So I feel really good about my team overall. And, you know, I will say that I haven't really been hit by that injury bug. So I'm going to knock on wood right now. And hopefully I don't get bit by that injury bug like some of the other teams. But, as far as the Rook's concerned, um, I said it in the beginning of the year. I was sticking by my statement. He gets two wins. Two wins this year, and he's already got them. So, you know, I don't think he's got a solid enough team with, you know, Chris Sims, Trent Richardson, um, Wright. What's his first name? Timothy? Timothy. Timothy Wright. Don't think those guys can get it done. Not even against me, but against most teams. So, um, Rook, I hope that you're going to be coming back next year. Um do enjoy having you in, in the league. So uh, the worst. I mean, I feel like he wants to get some respect back, so he's got to do it. He's got to do it. Got to do it. You got to come back. You can't just go out, you know, at the bottom. So maybe next year, you know, uh, you'll finish somewhere in the middle. You know, get a little taste of all of what it's like. You know, first worst, and then maybe like seventh. Look outside, looking in. 
But um, feeling really good. And uh, obviously, if I have two losses at the end of the season, I won't be feeling good. But right now, I'm feeling good. Right, now we're and the next matchup comes live from the shower. Tremendous pressure. I love the water pressure. Hey, can you get my back? Rub a dub dub. Of course I can, bro. <laughs> All right, the next match we have Huber squashed going up against McCoy's homeboys. And I couldn't believe when I looked at this matchup that Jay has about a seven point projection lead on you. I really thought it was the other way around until I looked at the actual team names. And um, I have to say, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more with Yahoo's projections. Look at this kid. He's got Tony Romo, only projected to get 37. He's going to get more than that. Yeah, uh, you got Matthews, red hot, only projected for 12.5. Now nah, he's going to get at least 20. Brandon Marshall and Roddy White are also really coming into their own. McCoy, hopefully he'll actually come around and do something. Foster's finally coming back from the injury, I hope at least. Um, you know, Harvin still trying to find his home. Minnesota versus Green Bay, maybe they'll get some turnovers. I don't like that, but... You know, I do like that we could have a historic back-to-back -back Huber squashed losses. Two losses in a row. Deli, I don't know if you've ever lost two weeks in a row to the Hubers. Have you? Never. So this could be historic. Um, you know, I see all that snow up in Buffalo, and I think that's your future, Deli. You're going to be snowed in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about a 15-foot wall of snow. You're not going to want to see the light of day after this week. Now, I have to say I'm really excited to see what Josh Gordon does, you know. I still think of him as one of my own. And, uh, you let him go. He's not one of your own. <laughs> you threw him outside like a redhead stepchild. Don't even try to call him one of his mine. Well, he's a druggie, you know. I was yeah, like, come well, on, man. Believe in your players. I, I didn't. I, you know what? I still want to see him do well. At the same time, I don't want to see you benefit from it. So I guess those two things can't happen at the same time. Uh, I'd like to see that you got Jonas Graham there. It's week too late. Detroit's the number one defense in the entire league. Um, we got Green Bay against Minnesota. That'll probably get you some points. And uh, I know you got to be excited about you know your four horsemen. <laughs> Although I can't, I can't actually in good faith say Brandon LaFell is one of your four horsemen. Well, I, he might not be. I'm debating between him and uh, Vincent Jackson right now. Because so. <laughs> this will be the week that he goes off. Exactly. The moment I don't put Vincent Jackson in, McCown discovers who he is again and throws him for two touchdowns, and, and I boil over, my top blows up. <laughs> I think it's worth putting in Jackson because LaFell didn't do much the last couple of weeks. Probably better off doing that. But anyway, um, don't listen to me. You know, uh, I think you should put Jared Cook back in there, pick him up for the fourth time this year, and uh, see what the hell. He did outperform your uh, tight end last week, as John pointed out. And uh, I think your team's cursed. I think uh, it's going to go Don't down. Don't you throw that word around me. I think C Craig versus Detling, week 13, winner gets into the playoffs it's at 6-7. and seven. So you, what is, is that your prediction I lose? Yes, you lose to uh, Jay. To Jay. Go, Jay, and get away from that basement, man. It's a dangerous place. What do you think, Det? Well, I mean, since I'm so... Rudely been interpreted over here, this matchup, uh, Brian. Um, yes, it is pretty crazy that uh, Jay is uh, projected more than me. Um, but And it's also pretty crazy that he's projected more than me at the same time. Tony Romo is projected at only 37 points, which we both know just it just can't happen. Not versus the New York Giants. I mean, yeah, it's always a scoring fest between those two. And uh, so this is at the Giants and plus Murray, uh, DeMarcus Murray. Um, Des Bryant, all those guys. I just yeah. can't see him being 37 points. And let alone, I mean, I would be more comfortable with uh, Tom Brady being 37 points versus Detroit. versus Detroit. I mean, he only got me like 32 last week. So uh, we'll see. And But I, I think it's going to be more passing for Brady this week because of uh, the, the defense for Detroit. Now, um, Jay's team is flat out strong, man. He's It's a... It's, it's like a foundation. It's a yeah. strong foundation of a team. Great draft. Great, great draft. <laughs> I don't know how he's two and nine. Uh, Roddy White is uh, coming along great. Old man is uh, you know put some oil on those joints and he, he's starting to catch the ball again. He's probably pissing uh, Justin Mahorek off because of that feigned Matt Ryan Julio Jones connection. Uh, and also Mark Sanchez has uh, found Jordan Matthews, apparently. Uh, he's the new number one, I would say. He is. Macklin's still contributing, though. Um, and McCoy, I know everybody, I know he's drafted number one overall, and everybody like, thinks that this is a, a terrible year for him, but uh, 
<coughs> he's quietly putting up a decent season. I mean, it's nothing where he, he can't be disappointed. I know he's not going to be light, lights out, but it's not lackluster either. Fantasy-wise, you Fantasy, can't be too excited. He's still decent. Like He's yeah. still going to get you to 10 to 15 points. And he just got a touchdown last week, true, I think. So true. it might be, might be McCoy time. Might be a little too late for Jay, but still, it might be McCoy time. Foster, I don't understand the 25-point projection. Me neither. I, I know Cincinnati is a terrible run defense, but I just don't think uh, he's going to be able to do that. Now, per- or what's his name? Percy Harvin? Percy. Percy Harvin in Buffalo. I mean, if it actually is in Buffalo, I want to see it. I want to see him get 15 points. They said it might actually be in Pittsburgh. What? Are you serious? Yeah. Really? On the news, they said it, there was a chance it could come to Pittsburgh. Wow, I didn't know that. That would be pretty crazy. Um, that would make my life a living hell. <laughs> Working there. It'll be like a Steelers home game on a Sunday when they're not there. It'll be a bunch of Buffalo New York Jet fans yelling at me. When, when would that happen? How's Buffalo fans even going to get here? <laughs> I have no idea. Side note, when I lived in New Jersey, I actually got to see a New York Jets game, and it was against Buffalo. Weird. Pretty weird. Uh, but no. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the weakness of it is Minnesota versus Green Bay, and I have Green Bay versus Minnesota. Uh, I hope Randall Cobb goes crazy. He's my flex. I hope he runs, passes, catches, everything. Uh, I had to put Jonas Gray in the running back slot because I'm already a dumb jerk ass for uh, not doing it the first time. If I don't do it again, you guys are going to call me out on it. And even if he does horrible this week, you're going to call me out on it. Yep. So it was a we lose, lose. Um, lose, lose, lose. <laughs> uh, my team's decent. I, I don't even know what to say anymore right now. I'm <laughs> I'm just stunned by my loss and, and the way these things are going. Like I literally was I was beating you. I was what was I five and four? Yep. Yep. It's been terrible. It's ups and downs. Uh I don't know. Go me. Um picking me. <laughs> Go me. Wow. That's a you know, enthusiastic uh response you're ever gonna get from Detling. <laughs> yes. We have is uh Nick Foley and Dynamite versus Possum Magic. Well, this is a tough one. Uh, looking over the lineups, uh, McFoley Dynamite. I mean, Kaepernick is your quarterback. Just screams red flag to me. Uh, but you got Rashard Jennings back versus Dallas. That might equal some playing time. But you got the you got Gronkowski and Graham. Gronkowski playing out of his mind right now, yeah. and I love it. Uh, Denver versus Miami. Um, Pierre Garcon. Uh, he's suffering from Robert Griffin as well. <coughs> Alshon Jeffrey. Pretty good. Mike Wallace, I don't know if he's going to get the 14. Uh, but when you go go over to Tree Sices, and it's just like, a, I don't even know what this is. These people have disappeared or that time forgot on his team. Uh, Kenny Britt, uh, he must be hoping for a little bit of that uh, old glory before one of his knees break. Um, and it's uh, Chris Hogan, Charles Hogan. I don't know. Is it Hulk Hogan's son? <laughs> I, I, I think he's in jail uh, as the Buffalo receiver. I think he had one catch for a touchdown. I think that's what... Kevin, or that's what a tree slice is hoping for. Yeah, one more catch, one more touchdown. Yes, yeah, 8.3 yeah, projection. That's, exactly. that's pretty much what it is. Uh, but, and he's holding on for Denard Robinson and Trey Mason, two guys you know, he picked up off the way, or he drafted Trey Mason. Yep. Um, <coughs> Mark Ingram in the flex. It's pretty good. Parky, Kansas City Devers, Oakland, not so hot right now. It's early. But, as always with uh, tree slice, I don't even care about the rest of his team. I just look at his quarterback, and I always say Tree Size wins because he has Peyton Manning. That, that's it? That's, that's my prediction. All right. Well, uh, I'm surprised that you didn't bring up all of the injuries and all of the horrible luck Tree Size had this past weekend. I knew you'd enjoy that more. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You saved it for me. Fitzgerald, I think that he's very questionable. He might, not, he might be out this week. We know that Hillman is pretty much done for like fantasy month? yeah, fantasy purposes. He's done for the, the year. Maybe? Yep. And we saw that someone else was out for the entire year. Uh, Ahmad Bradshaw? Yeah, that's him. The broken leg. I had a pretzel stick. Yep. And hey, man, I got to give you credit. You, you rode that horse until he actually broke, man. So you... Craig yeah, Bobby so... <laughs> got cut off there but now we're going to come back and try to remember what you're we talking about but uh essentially you know you haven't really had a, a taste for a loss in a long time since week two and um i know craig was saying in his video recap that when do you want to get that first loss during the regular season or do you want to get it during the playoffs and uh i think it's going to be a little bit of both 
think it's going to be this week, and I think it's going to be the first week of the playoffs. I think you've had too many injuries to actually uh, be able to like move on with a winning team. Peyton Manning can only go so far. We saw that last year, and we're going to see it again this year. So um, good luck to you, but I think Nick Foley and Dynamite's team, who doesn't have a whole lot going on, is going to have enough to take you down with the first loss. And uh, Kansas City's not helping you out too much right now, losing 7 nothing. But um, go Nick Foley and Dynamite. And the next matchup of the week, we have you might put in going up against FC Bahoric. Uh, just coming off the win with Midget's Cut Hair, uh, which was a direct shot at my mom. Thanks, Jet. Loved it. Once again, proving that he is a prick. <laughs> He was making him look like a villain. I don't think he's truly that much of a villain, but... A nice guy would not call out your mom like that. Your mom gives wonderful haircuts. She's a beautiful lady, makes great chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, you got that right. So maybe he is a prick. Uh, anyway, on to the matchup. Uh, believe it or not, Jeff is still fighting for that playoff spot. He, his only real chance is probably at that sixth place spot, but that's all you need to get in. And uh, he's going to have to win out. And hope for a little, well, a lot of help in order for him to not get in there, or for him to actually make it in. Um, and the first step, he's got to somehow take down FC Bahoric. Um, we got Eli Manning going up against Matt Ryan. You don't like those odds at all. Um, Eli Manning throwing five picks last week, so he's saying, you know, can't throw five picks two weeks in a row, like similar to like how Big Ben threw six inter six touchdowns in a row. So. I hope you don't have the same luck uh, for Manning there. But, uh, you know, your lineup's not that bad. I really like Ellington and the flex. Uh, you know, I, like, I love Indianapolis D against Jacksonville. Um, A.J. Green against Houston is going to be a tough matchup, but I think he might get some something. DeAndre Hopkins, he's been quiet for a while, so it's about time for him to get something happening. Um, looking over at FC Bohork's side. You got the Matt Ryan, the Julio Jones connection as always, and uh, it's been kind of lackluster lately. So uh, maybe it'll be Jones' week this week. Jordy Nelson's been money in the bank all year. Sammy Watkins coming off that really rough week. Um, Marshawn Lynch, that's a, kind of a question mark for uh, postseason fantasy purposes there. They said he's starting to get worn out, getting run down, so maybe beast mode isn't going to be able to really take you all the way to the promised land. Um, not sure what you're going to do uh, with the Buffalo defense. Hopefully there's a game for you <laughs> against the Jets, but that's that's actually a good play. And actually, if it was in Buffalo with all that snow, that'd be perfect for you. Yeah, Vic couldn't run. Vic couldn't run. I doubt they'd be able to run, you know, throw very much. Uh, I'm imagining them playing in four feet of snow, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> which I know wouldn't happen, but it would be fun to watch. It would be like a turkey bowl. <laughs> it would. Um, so anyway... It's going to be a close matchup, but <clears throat> just because I, th I want things to become a little more interesting, I'd love to see you, my put and get a win here, so I'm going to go with him. Just because I'd like to see it clog up that six, six uh, spot, you know? So that's what I'm going with. How about you? Wow. Wow. Rooting for the, un the Hope underdog. Hope you go for a lot of underdogs yeah. this week. <laughs> you are. Uh, you didn't go for me, though. No. So I, I don't understand. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, yeah, FC Bohork for so you, my put in here. We got... Matt Ryan and Julio Jones connection, uh, always fun to watch, but this week it might be tough to watch because you're going against Cleveland, my friends, and as we all know, Cleveland has Joe Hayden, and yeah. they're going to put, I think he's going to put the clamps on Julio Jones, say, hey man, you're not beating me deep, uh, you throw to Roddy White all day, go, you know, old man can get 10 yards, could be the Atlanta version of Art Monk, uh, but the thing with Jerry Nelson, uh, this guy's amazing. I don't understand how this happens. He's, is he, he's probably like the number one. I haven't done the stats, but maybe he's like the number one receiver in the league. I have no idea. But this guy, I mean, he is always open. And when he's yeah. open, I mean, he's wide open. Yeah. Like he's like, it's like literally wide open. I, and one of the, I was watching the high limit with this other dealer and the dealer looks at me when it happens. There's nobody around. He goes, you know what? He's happy. He goes, scores a touch. He's like, I just always like it when the white receiver does well. And I just started laughing. You can, you can I, I said, dude, I'm right there with you, man. I was like, just like that guy on the NBA that shoots the three-pointer that they only use. The white guy, like John Paxson. I have to uh, bring up a, one of the funniest tweets I've seen in a long time this past week. Um, Bill Crawford from DVE tweeted out about Heath Miller. He said, and this kind of goes with Jordy Nelson, 
He said, uh, Heath Miller is just like Walmart. He's always open and white people love him. <laughs> oh, wow. I like it. Yeah. Kind of an insult to white people, but <laughs> I love a good Walmart. <laughs> True size, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but back to the team here. Yeah, Justin's team is really good. Uh, Watkins, who knows what's going to happen with that. So the same with Buffalo. Uh, Lynch might get worn out, but the dude wants to go somewhere, so he's going to perform. Uh, Alfred Morris, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, CJ Anderson, great pickup. Wish I had him. Uh, now you're tight end. Dwayne Allen's out. Uh, Heath Miller's out, too. Um, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> I but, do. But I hear that Jared Cook... Is available, so uh, let's see you pick him up and win him with Jared Cook, baby. So I can text you and be like, "Hey, uh, Jordan Reed did better than Jared Cook." <laughs> if it happens, um, uh, you might put in uh, Eli. Yeah, Eli, Eli Manning, man, five interceptions, not too great. AJ Green, not too bad. Uh, uh, Crabtree, Hopkins. This is like, this is like uh, you know, like all the number twos. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. Uh, Frank Gore. I could, eh, now I'm looking at your team. I'm trying to come up with something positive. <laughs> uh, Ellington versus Seattle's not. Oh man. Okay, Indianapolis for Jacksonville. There you go. There's a there's a positive. I mean, they could totally stomp on them. They could. They could. They could. Uh, but so you want you might put in a win. I obviously am going to root for FC Bohork to win. And uh, a little tidbit here. Uh, Justin told me yesterday that he is going to throw the game for me not to get in the playoffs. So. By him saying that, I assume if he loses, whether he threw it or not, that he did throw the game. And and right now, the way I do see it happening is that he does not start tight end at all. And he loses by like two points, and he laughs at me. Because he has that kind of power to throw fantasy football games. He does right now. <laughs> all right, this next matchup, we got the uh, Dub C Hooligans versus the Rubba Dub Dub C. Uh... Very clever name. Oh, absolutely. Rub a dub dub C. Brilliant. I'm surprised the avatar isn't a rubber duck. Uh huh. We don't know how to change it, probably. <laughs> Chemical engineers. Oh, so smart. Uh, let's see here. We got Aaron Rodgers versus Andy Dalton. I feel like that's all you have to say, but I'm going to keep on I going. Guess we should go on. Yeah. But then again, you know, you look over here on uh, Bean's roster, and it's got Emmanuel Sanders starting. <laughs> um, not going to happen. Nope. Deshaun Jackson versus San Francisco. Going to be locked down. Kendall Wright versus Philly. Maybe. Maybe some points are. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Demarcus Murray. Giants could be good. Houston versus Cincy. Not bad. Look over at uh, Josh's team. You know, he's got uh, Andy Dalton. Dwayne Bowe. <laughs> uh, Ruben Randall, who actually, for some reason, performed like last week. I He's doing really well. Wow. Uh, and the first time ever, Des Bryant... Welcome, um, welcome, to, welcome to Josh Hayward's team. Yeah. Open arms, I assume. I presume. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he was like golden like, chain. Sure, he's like showering him with all these gifts. You know, <laughs> I know. Right? He, sh he had the limo at the airport for yeah. him. He was everything. He probably was, it was BMW that he gave. He gave. He took the BMW. He gave to Stacy and gave it to Des Bryant. That's how happy he was. He's like, man, you get whatever you want. You get the key to my city. That's right. He's like, uh, Stace, do you mind like sleeping on the couch? I think <laughs> we're just gonna give uh, we're gonna have Des our bed for tonight. Is that all right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's lower lumbar support. <laughs> <laughs> but he's but he's he's on what he's doing. His running backs. Terrence West might be the guy. I know you don't want to hear it, but he's not. Well, when I draft him, I I pretty much assumed that he was gonna be the guy, but I, I had too much. I didn't have enough space on my roster to keep him because my whole roster I thought was so good. <laughs> Keyword thought. Uh, but he's got Julius Thomas, Macklin, and uh, Cleveland versus Atlanta kicker, Seattle versus Arizona. It's a tough one to pick. Um, I'm going with Bean, mainly because, once again, he's 5-6 and six and I want him to lose, just in case I lose. So, go Bean. Yeah, I never thought we'd it both... It makes me sick to say that. Yeah, same here. and I'm probably going to go with you on that one because I can't really vote for too many underdogs because I really am not guaranteed in the playoffs yet. And if I was going to go against any underdog, it's going to be Josh. Not because it's Josh, but just because his team is basically now Des Bryant. I mean, I don't I even know. You guys are Cobras. We are Cobras, but I just don't know if uh, Julius Thomas is actually going to even play. Uh, Missed some practice, it looks like. He's sidelined today. I, I just don't see him playing. And 
Now, he used to be your entire team. <laughs> now your entire team is Des Bryant. So if you had two stud players, I might give you a chance. But God, with Andy Dalton, I don't know. Man, that's, that's rough. You've, you really had no good quarterback this entire year, and I know you know it. So, uh, and his biggest beef, I was talking to him over the weekend, is that, you know, he has no running backs. And he's like, crying me a river about, you know, let's see here, ball. He was balling about ball. He was crying about Peterson. And it's, you know, tough luck. Yeah, well, that's what you get when your running back freaking destroys his kid with a switch. Yeah, exactly. You deserve that, Josh. <laughs> you should have known. You should have studied his character better. And I'm really shocked that he did, hasn't dropped him now that they've said he's out for the season. Now he's really doing to spite you, Delling. <laughs> what do I care? I know. No sweat off your bill. You'll care whenever he's in the playoffs if he makes it, which I don't think he expects to win. I mean, I remember from our interview, he had really low expectations for his team then. I'm sure they're even lower now. Well, maybe they're higher with Dwayne Bowe, but I mean with um, <laughs> Dwayne Bowe. Bo. No, not Dwayne Bowe, Des Bryant. He might be a little bit higher now, but I don't think he expects to make playoffs. But if he does, he'll laugh in your face. In my face, too, if he beats me. Now, going over to Dub Seaside, I don't really think his team is going to do a lot in the playoffs just because of all the injuries. And I don't like to predict injuries, and I, and I definitely don't wish anything bad upon any NFL player, but how has DeMarco Murray not gotten hurt yet? It's taking time bomb, man. Exactly. He's been getting run to the ground, and I really think that before the end of our playoffs, maybe it won't happen now or next week, maybe the first week of the playoffs, I, I just think he's going to get injured. And uh, like I said, I'm not trying to wish anything ill upon Bean and his team. I just think that's what's going to happen. So uh, Fantasy Gods, if you're listening, I'm not wishing ill upon Bean. Um, having said all that, I think Dub C is going to pull this one out. Rub a dub dub C is gonna officially be buried for next week. We might as well get those arrangements in order. So we just say drowned? Oh drowned. Hey. That is why they pay you the big bucks. That is brilliant. And uh if you want to, Josh, if you do lose and you want to write your team a haiku, yeah, phone it in. I, I think you should put a haiku in the obituary. That'd be great. And finally, we'll leave you with the matchup of the week. We have the new gods, Mad Titans, the Kamish going up against the Springfield Isotopes, the little Kamish, assistant to the Kamish. He's going to try to survive one more week. And to do so, he's going to have to take down his boss. It's going to be an interesting matchup because right now he's projected to lose and he's making some questionable... Uh, decisions, the isotopes that is. I don't know if I would actually put Jamal Charles in a ru in a running back spot. I'd probably try to flex him at all costs. And what I think is interesting is that you know, he's got Blunt on the bench. He only got one actual offensive play last week, but he didn't get to touch the ball. And just like Craig, Belichick's an evil genius, and I could totally see him putting Blunt in there, giving him 20 carries just to Basically say F you to the Steelers and uh, let Blunt, you know, bask in the glory. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. But, you know, Craig, he's going to put all his money on Golden Tate in the flex. You know, Des Bryant's probably on Josh's team over there laughing, saying, you know, you're playing Landry over me. Um, and, and Landry outscored Tate last week, which I'm sure Craig noticed. But um, I think this is going to be the week that, the commissioner gets to uh, have the pleasure of knocking out the second, you know, juggernaut. I use the word juggernaut lightly with Delling this year, although he probably will make playoffs. Um, but Craig, you know, he's historically a juggernaut. Detling is historically a juggernaut. And uh, Jimmy has the pleasure of potentially giving them both a loss back-to-back -back weeks, potentially helping out to knock both of them out of the playoffs. This would definitely knock Craig out, and uh, if Dalling loses one more, he's probably out. Yeah. Probably. Well, on to the actual matchup. You have to love Andrew Luck versus Jacksonville. I guess, especially since they got rid of, well, they had to get rid of Bradshaw, so that maybe they'll throw it a little bit more. Um, Demarius Thomas <clears throat> against Miami, it's going to be a tough matchup, but I think he can do something. My only concern is that he's playing Hill and Bernard. Um, I guess you have to. 
um, since you don't know who's going to get the carries. But it still gives you the chance to put Forte in the flex. One of your weak links, Jimmy, is Rivera. I mean, he had a couple touchdown weeks that were half decent, but I don't know if he's going to be a good tight end to take you into the playoffs. And it could be a link that hurts you in the long run. Um, and since you, as you know and pointed out, you're the only manager from Eastern PA that's going to be represented in the playoffs as of now. I mean, there's a chance that Jeff could sneak in there. But as of now, it looks like you're going to be the only guy carrying the load. So that's a, some heavy, heavy pressure on those shoulders. Uh, <clears throat> but anyways, I've talked about it. This is a matchup enough. I'm going with Jimmy, giving Craig the knockout blow, the isotopes. Um, going to be fighting for their lives. So we'll see what happens. Wow. So uh, when you say, Craig, listen to this one. Brian says, historically, we're juggernauts. Historically. Not presently. Historically. I believe he's calling us fossils. I think he's saying we're old. We're done. We're going to be discovered 100 years from now by some guy on a cliff. And we're going to look like our avatars. <laughs> Me being a young superhero and you being the entire Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, should make for a great Marvel movie 100 years from now with the special effects. Uh, now, historically speaking... Uh, we are juggernauts, and also, currently speaking, I'm still a juggernaut because I'm not out of the playoffs, and I'm pretty sure nobody wants to play me in the playoffs because I have some pretty freaking good players. And uh, I hope to see Brian. I don't think it's possible unless it's in a championship. You're not really a juggernaut this year. You're more of like a juggalo. <clears throat> a juggalo? Yeah. You, an insane clown posse? <laughs> I mean, you're a joke, man. I'm a gigolo is what I am. Listen, (laughs) I will have Calvin Johnson, Josh Gordon, Randall Cobb, Tom Brady, Le'Veon Bell. You know this isn't your matchup, right? I'm just defending the the, the whole juggernaut uh, thing. Uh, Point is, I'm freaking loaded, and if my team goes off, it's going to be all over your face, Brian. (laughs) And you will be knocked out of the playoffs. Uh, Anyways, back to the matchup at hand. Stop laughing. You're not a per- don't be a pervert, Brian. Don't be a pervert. <laughs> like Justin Bork. Uh Now, interesting. Some, uh, Craig did bring something up to me. Um, we were always wondering about if, uh, if he ever lo- wasn't in the playoffs. And he had to go back and check because he wondered himself. Uh, the first year he was not in our league. The first year he didn't make the playoffs. Because, wow. uh, well, I mean, to be honest, that's when it was the hardest. <laughs> and I won that championship. So I wish the whole league was here so we could all laugh together. <laughs> uh, they're laughing. <laughs> Go on, laugh. And uh, the other one, actually, is one that the league can laugh at is the last time Brian or that Craig did not make the playoffs was, I believe, the last time that you made the playoffs. Is that right? That you won the championship. Wow. So, uh, history. History. Could Histori- repeat itself. Historically, uh, when, when Craig falls, Brian rises. But thank God. Uh, Craig only falls like once every six years, and basically those other years in between, Brian uh, is not a fossil or a, of a, being a juggernaut. It's a man on a toilet crying himself to sleep. So uh, this might be your year, but I don't see it happening. I do. Let me tell you why. Well, and I'm glad you pointed out that Craig was already out of the playoffs, which made my uh, path to the championship a little bit easier. Um, and you said the only way that I would actually play you would be in the championship which is interesting because i believe that year five years ago i played you in the championship uh-huh. am i not right, correct sir <laughs> that is uh yes that is historically is correct sir so i bet you that one of my running backs will get four touchdowns and i'll have to just figure out which one that's going to be which one that's closest to brandon jacobs and then history will truly repeat itself uh, so you will also uh if it was historically speaking you will also admit that you are one lucky son of a bitch when a stupid guy named Brandon Jacobs wins the uh, the championship for you, and there's an element, and, of- and you blatantly disrespect him by getting a Philip Rivers jersey for the draft and do your little trophy and your speech from Jay, thus cursing Jay, who hasn't made the playoffs in a long time. Uh, now, I mean, I just don't. Oh, well, Philip Rivers got me there, but Brandon Jacobs has brought the trophy home. And you disrespected him, man. You didn't buy him a jersey. You should have bought Jacob's jersey. You come in because you wanted the powder blue, you little fairy. <laughs> you should have went with the giant blue, and maybe you'd be in the playoffs. 
That's really funny. You, you got to call names, man. I got, I'm powder over here, man. I'm just powder. So I just want to point out that I don't think it would have mattered which jersey I bought. I pissed the fantasy gods off. That's why I haven't done anything. And I've, I have repented. I've uh, paid for my like sins, and uh, I'm going to make the playoffs this year. And uh, Brandon Jacobs, yeah, he helped me get it over the top for the victory. It wasn't luck because we both scored over 200 points. We both had mad skill. I just had a little bit more. A little bit more luck. And I'd like to also point out that I had Jay Cutler as my quarterback. All right, are you done with this matchup? Hold on, get back to the matchup of hand. All right, no old wounds. We're done over the old wounds from five or six years ago, whenever the last time Brian made the playoffs. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> okay, we got Jimmy versus Craig. Boy, you sure wish you had Des Bryant right now instead of a Golden Tate. I mean, yeah, I understand... You don't have any running backs besides Sean Charles. You're still playing Niles Davis. I mean, the luck, you know, you know your luck is running bad when your other right, when the top running back walks off the field because he doesn't get a carry. And now he's with the Patriots. Which I can't get rid of this freaking by Laguerre Blunt. I mean, first he's bringing down Le Le'Veon Bell. Now he's going to be bringing down Jonas Gray. What's Bill Belichick doing? Bring this guy back. I mean, you got Vereen, Gray. I mean, is he going to be a backup? He's going to, you know, what he's going to do. He's going to be a goal line vulture, and I'm going to be pissed. Probably. Uh, but yeah, you go to Jimmy. He's got Luck and Thomas, Sanu. I don't know how he keeps scoring. Uh, I don't think Bernard's even going to play, to be truthful. Uh, but we'll see. And your tight end, Mika Rivera. I mean, get the hell out of here. This guy. I mean, Matt Forte and Thomas and Luck. That's your foundation right there. And Philly versus Tennessee. Could mop it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it, Craig, I mean, love you, buddy, but you're not going to make it this time. I think he's going to beat you this game, really crushing your playoff hopes. But even then, I don't even think he'll still be out because what? who knows? We all might lose again. Could come down. Are you saying he could make it into the playoffs with five wins? Well, well, I have five wins right now. What if I don't win? What if Jade, J, uh, what do you call it? Josh doesn't win? What if uh, yeah. Jeff doesn't win? Because you know what? Craig's got like 100, 200 more points than I do. Overall, you sound as crazy as Craig. We, well, that's why we've known each other since fourth grade. <laughs> We're diabolical, and we bring it out in each other. Diabolical, I don't know. Delusional, maybe. Now, we're diabolical. Listen, man, we once played this game called Tecmo Baseball. We were so into it, and we figured it out that he was better at offense, and I was better at defense. So that's how we played. He batted, I pitched, and played the field. And we know we kicked the crap out of that game. So we... Uh, we might, we're good teammates and we're good enemies at the same time. All right, so you're going, Jimmy? I am going with Jimmy. Uh, good luck to you both, and uh, I guess good luck to everyone because this one isn't quite as exciting as last week because some things are kind of falling into place. And after this week, we're going to probably know a lot more. And I am rooting for a Detling versus Kabistic uh, final game of the, of the, of the year. Uh, just to make it into the sixth seed, I think that would be beautiful. I think it would be a great historic matchup from two historic juggernauts. Well, I think even though you're rooting for it, and if the whole league is rooting for it, I think you're all making a big mistake because uh, if either of us win and make it in the sixth place, historically speaking, Brian, the last two seasons, yeah. the sixth seed has won the championship. And then went straight to the basement. I'll take a championship, and I'll go straight to the basement happily. Yeah, I would too. You can see exactly. All right, Deli, you ready? <clears throat> I normally am ready, Brian, but uh, we forgot one more important thing. What's we probably that? run a little long. I haven't seen the time. Uh, the video cast this week was extraordinary. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, uh, best yet. Blindingly uh, great. <laughs> blindingly. I uh, almost fell off my couch within the first five seconds. Craig, you're a genius. Uh, you putting your body out there like that. I mean, like a sex worker in Amsterdam. And for us to all to see, uh, it was pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie with the sunglasses. Uh, also, with the spotlight on you, where like basically made your, like, there's, you've heard of Two-Face. This is like a two-body thing, because yeah. you saw Craig, Craig with the hair, but with the spotlight, it made him look like you saw what his body would look like without the hair. So it was just like, you know, you had, your imagination went, around, went wild. <laughs> my, my imagination or your, your our imagination together yours uh well and uh as our and since you were so crazy to do that craig uh just to let everybody know uh this entire podcast <laughs> me and brian have done with our shirts <laughs> off 
<laughs> That's absolutely true. Um, and I want to say to Craig, props just for actually staying in character the entire show without the shirt. Um, it's been a really cold week. You know, we've been down into the 20s, down below zero overnight. So, you know... I didn't notice if his nipples were hard or not, but, you know, that's a, that's a tall task to keep the shirt off for an hour. That's true. It's true. And uh, also, um, and one last thing I'll just say is, in the spirit of movies that are coming out this week that Jimmy Huber probably is running to see in the middle seat, middle aisle, <coughs> may the odds be forever in your favor. Nice. Now are you ready? Now I'm ready. Go! 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 Go!